Sup of the nut meat. <laughs> I bequeath to thee the meat of my ginkgo nut. <laughs> I'm big upset, please stop. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the Paleontologist Rank, the Dinosaur Designs of Jurassic World Evolution 2 series. Before we get started with today's episode, uh, to briefly introduce ourselves for any new viewers, I'm James Napoli. I'm a postdoctoral researcher at the North Carolina Museum of Natural Sciences and North Carolina State University. Uh, my name is Amelia Zietlow. I'm a PhD candidate at the American Museum of Natural History. My name is Scott Johnston. I am the vertebrate paleontology fossil preparator and technician at the Harvard Museum of Comparative Zoology. I'm Alex Rubenstahl. I'm a PhD candidate at Yale University. And I'm Dalton Meyer, also a PhD candidate at Yale University. And together, we're the Skeleton Crew. So today's installment of this series is featuring a pretty famous dinosaur that we were very lucky to roll this early in the, in the random chance box which means that there's going to be a stretch of real duds later on, later on down the line random uh, it, it was random <laughs> this was random it was yeah. random in fact it ruins an earlier plan to do this later fair enough, fair enough. Um, <laughs> hope everybody's excited for the stretch of asian stegosaurus that we're going to get where we, we have three things to say about them collectively <laughs> we love asian That's stegosaurus good. they will all be separate videos though for ad revenue purposes on that note remember to like subscribe and hit that bell right remember <laughs> to hit that bell everything you do when you're watching our video that helps us in the algorithm unless it's disliking the video which we expressly prohibit <laughs> uh, it, it is you'll, actually illegal. Please don't. You'll do go to paleontology jail, which is a real place that I've seen. It's inhabited only by Nano Tyrannus right now. <laughs> um, anyway, Dalton, why don't you uh, show us around this enclosure you've built here? All right. Well, what we've got here is a uh, a middling attempt at cre recreating the Hell Creek environment. So we've got kind of a wetlands. Um, with a lot of braided streams and, and, and water bodies and a lot of ginkgos because they're really the only plant in the game that you can also find in the Hell Creek. Um, now, what is you know, the Hell, Hell Creek, Creek for those not not a for those not familiar? What is the Hell Creek? Yeah, so the Hell Creek is a geologic formation. And it's the formation in which one finds Triceratops, which is of course our animal of focus today, and it's often you know, likened somewhat to the Everglades. So that's kind of a good proxy environment to think of. The full of Republicans? Probably. Let's well, Triceratops a Republican. I mean, if Land Before Time is anything to go off, yes. <laughs> oh, actually, yes. Daddy Tops, who, according to the wiki, is known for his racism. <laughs> yeah, Daddy Tops is actually, I think, the voice I imagine whenever I hear the phrase Trump supporter in my head. <laughs> He'll make the Great Valley great again. Wait, who voiced Daddy Tops? I don't. I don't. I don't know. That. You don't like the name Daddy Tops? <laughs> You've done a good a good job here recreating a creek. Well, I mean, no, it's a perfect representation of the Hell Creek. That it's it's kind it's of everlazy and it's, it's full of triceratops. Like... Not enough gators and turtles. And turtles, yeah. Now, and gar. I don't want to be a negative Nelly, but wouldn't the kind of almost cypressy trees and like the malt and not in the malta map but in the jurassic park dominion map been a better fill in for the hell creek i don't think so because that i mean the Domin are you talking about the biosyn map yeah. yeah i mean the trees may have been better but that's an alpine environment so it's very much not what we, we should sure, be for. fair enough do we have a moment for a quick botanical fun fact about ginkgos because they're very interesting trees and yeah. A lot. yeah. No. Well, and because I, we don't have many chances to talk botany on this channel, and we've mentioned ginkgos, and they are very cool. But Amelia, before you talk about ginkgo, ginkgos, I want to briefly mention the fact that Daddy Tops, as credited in Land Before Time One, was actually renamed Mister Threehorn in all of the following movies, as Cowards. if they knew, as if they Red knew that Cowards. Daddy Tops was a little bit too sexual for the kids' movies. He'll always be Daddy Tops to me. Who was he voiced by? He was voiced by um, Burke Burns, which is a great name. Um, he's still alive. He hasn't acted since 1994. He was then recast as John Engel for all of the direct-to-video sequels. 
Mm. And um, I think it's John Ingalls' voice that I associate with it because really the Land Before Time movie I watched the most was Land Before Time 3. I don't what's, really know what's the why. Sometime of that one? Oh, that's the one... Man, gonna make the me voice... Google it. The voice of Daddy Tops hasn't worked in a one Scott lifetime. Yeah, exactly. Um, it is The Land Before Time 3, The Time of Great Giving. That's the one you watch the most, not Big Big Water? Big Stone Water. Cold Fire. I don't think we That's had Big Water on my uh, on VHS as a child. Which is very upsetting yeah. to me. Big yeah, there were a couple I never original. had. I mean, the original, I just simply did not ever want to watch. I was very sad all the time. It's so depressing. It is a sad film. Well, oh yeah, Journey to Big then... Water came out when I was seven. I was watching these movies really young, okay. mostly. Okay. Yeah. Um, this one has uh, raptors in it also. That's the ending antagonist as a pack of velociraptors. Yes. Cool. Well, maybe. We, we tangented off of paleobotany hour right but we're gonna oh. trans we're gonna tangent back into paleobotany hour so that amelia can talk about trees about i'm gonna have a chance to talk in the video about something i know and care about. please <laughs> <laughs> no no well well yeah like i mean like i said i'm we don't talk much about plants in these games because we're ranking the dinosaurs this game has a lot of different plants that you can customize make nice customized yeah. environments and yeah ginkgos have been around for a very long time um, and they are cool because they're actually gymnosperms. So that's the group of plants that um, the most common ones you probably are familiar with are uh, pine trees and that kinds of kind of thing. So gymnosperm means naked seed, and that's because their seeds are not enclosed in a flower, in a, actually technically in a fruit when they're done or not done when they're ready to be dispersed. They have cones, which are not the same as a fruit. It's a different um, structure altogether. Um, so and ginkgos are double fun and weird because they are monoecious which means that each individual plant is either male or female <clears throat> so plants do a fun thing with with sex in that sometimes they have both sexes in the same spot on the on the plant on the body i suppose um so if you think of like most flowers that you know have that there's going to be like if you think of a lily there's a big sticky thing in the middle and the pollen is out on the outside the sticky thing is the female the pollen is the male they're on the same flower other plants like they have male and female flowers that are separate but they're on the same plant ginkgos it's the entire individual tree that is either male or female um and most ginkgo that you will encounter in the united states are male because the females um the they produce like kind of fruits i know i just said they don't have fruits um it's because they're not quite the same structure as like a, a flowering plant fruit um but the berries that they produce are really gross and stinky and mm. for a decorative tree that you have in your cities you don't want them dropping nasty stinky sticky berries all over the place um yeah that's all i have to say about ginkgos they're very cool i like them a lot and they're bizarre and they showcase a lot of bizarre aspects of of plant biology that most people, you know, may not know about. I, I want to eat the stinky allergy berries. <laughs> That's the next TikTok challenge is no, stink don't. berry. Eat, eat well, ginkgo fruit. Don't. I mean, if you know, uh, no, oh, it's worse. It, so the, the quote that I have here from the Washington Post is if carefully harvested, the fruits yield a nut meat that's edible in small amounts. Sup of the nut meat. <laughs> I bequeath to thee <laughs> the meat of my ginkgo nut. And big upset, please stop. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, you know, the meat of my fat I wasn't ginkgo sure if we'd nut. get a good cold open out of this dinosaur, but we sure did. <laughs> I I love plants so much. <laughs> Thank you, cool. Amelia. I can't wait to relive that while I cut it out of the video. All right, let's talk about a dinosaur now though. <laughs> Nah. <laughs> so so Dalton, it's it's interesting that you made a lot of triceratops. Yes. Because um that's exactly what we find in the Hell Creek formation. Have all of us dug in the Hell Creek? I no. actually haven't. No. No. I haven't <gasps> okay. No, so Scott, only two of us. Yeah. No, yeah. well so as someone who's actually dug in the Hell Creek, I can confirm we have 
So in the, the sites that we work right now, I believe we have about a dozen Triceratops cores. And we find, like, new ones every year. Right. Like, at least three or four new ones a year. Most Triceratops in our land, uh, or the land that we uh, collect on, the, the group that I go out with, the land that we collect on, um, are found by people sitting down. And they happen to sit on them, because they're everywhere. So the Hell Creek was actually my first fieldwork experience. And I remember the the first dinosaur fossil I saw in situ was a triceratops frail chunk thing weathering out of the side of a cliff. And I remember how fast I went from, oh my God, this is a chunk of one of the most famous and charismatic dinosaurs of all time. This has been untouched for 66 million years. I cannot believe how lucky I am to. There's another one. Oh, there's another one. Oh, I stepped on Triceratops again. Oh, there's some over there. I think every field season in the Hell Creek Formation yields like a flake of a Tyrannosaur bone and, and like 16,000 Triceratops individuals. It's like the Terracotta Army. They're, they're just coming out of the ground. Uh, they're everywhere. Which tells us something really interesting about Triceratops, which is that they're really good at dying. <laughs> right. They're terrible friggin at being brat. alive. They're the friggin' best at that. They're, and we don't really know why they're so common in the Hell Creek Formation. It, like, your initial guess might be that they were the most common animal in the ecosystem. And, and I don't think that that's quite it, because they're the size of an African elephant. And there's no way that they were like 98% of what was alive in the Hell Creek Formation. They can't have been that numerous compared to other things. I, I think it's mostly that they're very heavily built. And so they probably survived the fossilization process a lot better than other things. Um, I think they're that that's probably... A river. They're hanging out near rivers. And they're, well, presumably, if they're getting buried that much. And or they're, they're so massive. Or they're dying near them. But they're so massive that when the floodwaters come and bury them, you know, forces that would destroy lesser creatures just move these around a little bit and bury them nicely. I, I think. That would be my guess about what's happening. But it, Truck they're, built. They are very, very... They're truck shaped a little bit. And they're truck built. Built different. They are built different. Built but what's funny is they're built very not different from most ceratopsians. Like, Well, they're built kind of different from a lot of ceratopsians especially in the frill that... well they have one difference right they have a very big difference yes right they they don't have a giant hole in the middle of their frill two and, well they don't have two of them right but they don't have one on either side they don't have one either they have zero right they have, they have no, 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 holes. no no holes no holes no holes not one single hole to be found well there's one single hole to be found in the triceratops but it's at the back it's the cloaca well, <laughs> it's the only hole. No, mm. uh, never mind. What? <laughs> no, I'm just you're you're missing the nostrils and the mouth and the ears and the holes that T Rex put in it and the <laughs> and the holes that T Rex puts in it <laughs> right and the All hole right, in its fine. heart from when it got oh. divorced. <laughs> <laughs> there are many holes. I there's, suppose there's sadness in these eyes. But there are many Look holes, but eyes. two of them are not there. And those two holes are found in pretty much every other Ceratopsian, which is kind of weird. I actually, I don't know of another Ceratopsian that does not have fenestrae in its frills. Yeah, no, now that you guys are talking about it, yeah, that no. is accurate, yeah. Yeah, I think, uh, so there's, well, I mean, it, part of it depends. So there's a couple of Ceratopsian fossils from the Hell Creek Formation that are of uncertain identity. Um... And they've been proposed to be juveniles of Triceratops or transitional species and things like that. And so depending on your interpretation of those fossils, there might be one other species that has like either no or very small holes in the frill. But mm. generally, Ceratopsians have these giant vacuities in the frill. We call them fenestrae, like Scott said. Um, and they're really massive. Like most of the size of the frill is just empty space. Would have been covered by skin in real life. Uh, a really good uh, visual representation of this in the Jurassic franchise is if you see their Cynoceratops, which they chose to depict with absolutely no skin covering over those fenestrae and just two big ol' holes straight through the frill. 
And we'll talk about that when we do the Sinoceratops video. It'll be pretty short. It, yeah, it'll be short. It'll be, this is a bad design. This is bad, yeah. <laughs> um, so I don't think anybody knows why Triceratops closed the holes in its frill. I have heard it suggested, half-jokingly, that it was to defend against its natural predator, which is T-Rex. I don't, I don't think that could possibly be the entire reason, but it sure is a coincidence that as soon as you have T-Rex, everything's closing their holes up and getting rid of their weak points. Pucker factor. Evolutionary <laughs> pucker factor of T-Rex. <laughs> Yeah. I don't like that at all. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, somebody say something else. <laughs> I mean, um, I'm going to... Oh. Yeah, go ahead, Dalton. I, I, really I was just going to say, uh, not to jump to, to rating, which we'll save for last, obviously. I think Triceratops in general... Ooh, look at him kind of fight. This is fun. Yeah, go. Oh, yeah. So I really like that animation. That's great. Um, but... I think Triceratops has done kind of a short shrift by the Jurassic franchise. Yeah. It, is. it doesn't ever do much. Like, it has that very magical moment with Dr. Grant in the first movie, but, like, it's also Doctor... sick and laying down. Dr. Dr. Grant. Grant? Dr. Alan Grant, who leans against it because it's the most beautiful it's... thing he's ever oh, seen. Oh, I thought, uh, sorry, I, I remember this, <clears throat> the Ellie scene. Oh, when, yes. When that, she's just that's... holding it, just crying. Just, oh, it's the... beautiful. Are you talking about when she's got a hand in its one big pile of shit? I'm talking about my cake. And I'll, and I'll let I'll just leave it open and let everyone interpret what that means. But it, it it doesn't do much in the movies, and it's it's a good design, but it's not like magnificent. It's one of the few where I could say it's fairly scientifically accurate without having a lot of flair. Yeah, mm -hmm. right? it's dull. It's dull. Like I have seen depictions of Triceratops that are beautiful making it one of the most majestic and elegant, but also imposing and dangerous looking animals I've ever seen. Kind of giving mm -hmm. it like like stag qualities. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, where it's yeah. got that kind of nobility and elegance to it with also knowing that it's a very, very formidable animal that you shouldn't trifle with. Mm -hmm. I love yeah. when artists are able to get that atmosphere for Ceratopsians and Jurassic really doesn't achieve that with the Triceratops design. The one that really comes to mind in particular is the designs of Triceratops in Prehistoric Kingdom, I have to say. Right. They are next level stunning. Oh, yeah. And um, the... I'm sorry. So some of the official licensed art that accompanies my postdoctoral research project, which is the... Um, the Dueling Dinosaurs Project. I could actually pull it up on screen right now. Wouldn't that be fun? Um, so the Dueling Dinosaurs, for those who don't know, are a juvenile Tyrannosaurus rex found in articulation and association with a Triceratops. I'm studying the T-Rex. But the Triceratops is also an amazing specimen. And if I go online to the website that was made for my postdoctoral research project, we have a piece of art. I'm showing it here. You guys can't see it because of the way we're recording this, but um, Julius Chutney oh, did it. Beautiful. Thank you. Ooh, ah. Ooh. And it's just gorgeous. It's got like eye spots and this brilliant, like bright blue and orange and black design on the frill. Mm. I think it's fantastic. I don't know. Mm. I kind of wish Jurassic Park did something a little bit more like that. I think that they're making, they make up with it for the, the Taurosaurus. In That's a oh yeah yeah yeah. Um, I just have a question because I'm a silly guy. Yeah. Now I th we have a lot of we have some Triceratops skin, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's undescribed. Is... Okay, I'm curious, like right, like because I think these guys have kind of elephanty skin. Let me try and find game out in the open and get close. And to like we could talk a little bit about Ceratopsian you know, scales. Yeah, yeah I, I know that, um, well, it, it is missing the one thing that I'm pretty sure that we know that Triceratops had, which is those really large kind of random scales that genuinely I have only ever actually heard referred to as nipple scales, which makes me really upset. I There has to be a better name for them. 
well, there probably is a better Whoops. name for them. But I've only heard nipple scale as well. Yeah, and though that's what Bob Backer calls them. Well, it's like I, those no, flush those mounts that you get swords. where they're called boob lights. Like <laughs> what? What? I said it's like those flush mount lights oh! that you get in shitty places where they call, where like literally everyone calls them boob lights. I thought you said flesh mount. You heard flashlight. Yeah, no, I heard, I... I heard flesh. <laughs> <as well>. yeah. <laughs> yeah, just just casually <laughs> dropping that on the recording, Scott, huh? So the the nipple scales thing, the only caution that I'd say with it is like we're pretty sure it exists, but like the scientific data on that has not yet been published. Like it's a specimen everybody knows about that's I think privately owned, or maybe it is at the Houston Museum Wait. reposited there, but like people have seen it and taken pictures of it, but there's no actual scientific analysis yet published. Yeah. So mm -hmm. we don't know quite what to make of their skin impression, but we do know that there was a lot of variety with the scales mm -hmm. and that there were these large feature scales or nipple scales, if you will. And I will not. But... I will. <laughs> no. And uh, I think that Alex was going to make the comment earlier that this Jurassic Park one actually has them. Kind yeah, of. it has. Th it's there got a bit some interesting scalation. Oh, it has. See, I this is. <clears throat> I remember that that weird whatever the hell that's supposed to be because growing up, I had it must have been a Jurassic Park like Triceratops toy that was like rubber. It had like rubber skin, but it could move. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's in my garage somewhere, probably. But I I just I remember it having these awful knobby things that are like oval shaped like that like they're not round like mm -hmm. osteoderms like normally i guess they're not, they don't, they're not always round but i don't know i kind of dig it yeah i think they're trying to be osteoderms if i had to guess yeah mm -hmm. um but yeah this is from the original film design and it had those but like most people don't realize a that it has these and b that it's not brown just because they covered it in so much dirt Right. Which yeah, again, that's, that's good true. for authenticity. Yeah. Because it, it, it's laying in the dirt, but it does hide a lot of the design. I think there was also some color on the frill in the like in the movie design, right? Like they did try to give it a little bit of visual flair and it got covered with you know, mm -hmm. pra practical effects. In this case dirt. Practical dirt. So I was just gonna say speaking of um frill designs, um what I believe is one of the top Triceratops designs of all time is the prehistoric park Triceratops mm. with the blue. Yeah. Like, that's how you do uh, display. That's a hunky design. Like, I love it. Mm. Yeah. No, I, I love that design tremendously. In fact, Triceratops became one of my favorite dinosaurs because of that design. Um, yeah. I, I really love that one. And I guess this all just underscores there could be a lot more going on here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I like that they've kept the little the hornlets the along the frill. Mm -hmm. I was just going to say those are the epiparietal and episquamosal bones, uh, which are distinct bones that form when the animals, you know, when the animals developing, but then yeah. later in their growth seem to fuse with the rest of the frill and become mm -hmm. indistinct or obliterated. So cool. this would be a fairly kind of prime of life animal that hasn't yet reached full sexual or full somatic maturity. It's sexually mature, but it isn't done growing officially yet. I will say as a lukewarm defense of the in-game Triceratops, some of the frontier skins for the Jurassic World Triceratops actually do have some pretty interesting coloration to them. There's mm -hmm. one that has kind of a, they're all, way more muted than I would like personally, but there's one that gives it kind of a much more like orange frill that specifically, and it's a feature that I don't see often on Triceratops, it gives it stripes on the brow horns, which yeah. I actually think is really interesting and kind of distinct looking. Yeah, you can see um, it here. Yeah, you can see it on that one, but there's another one of the patterns that actually has a, a much more vibrant frill. Vibrant as you can get, like it's still all... Oops relatively relatively muted by it that one we were just looking at the way that it's like darker at the tips it reminds me of like a longhorn you know yeah that's mm -hmm. nice i like that a lot yeah that's a yeah. good design alex you were going to say curve of the horns just like right when you look at the it's it's, it's nice to the design is a nice reminder that for things like horns and claws there's more to the structure than just the bone that's preserved 
where like a triceratops, right? You think of the horn you get, it's usually just, you just kind of get that first two thirds from the head. And then there's that keratinous extension of the horn that is then turning upwards, right? Yeah. I, I don't believe we've ever had that keratinous layer preserved, but from, uh, if memory serves, like the more recent trend of having like relatively sharp upturns to the end of the horns is looking at the proposed growth of them that Triceratops at least seems to have had backwards facing horns when it was younger and then they mm. kind of pointed forward as it got older. So it would make sense that older individuals unless they wore that layer of their keratin off, would have a little bit of a curl at the end of their horns. Maybe a very old ones wouldn't. Is that yeah. something we've known for a while? No. Or suspected for a while? I can't remember if that's recent. the original. It's very recent. It, it's a pretty new idea. Design. But I mean, these, these the don't original. curve at the tip to the extent that I think Scott's talking about. Like, these no. have like a gentle curve that I think people we've inferred in the keratin just from the shape of the bone yeah no but people have like we've seen ones that are curved like way back in paleo like Loki horns almost yeah i remember first really seeing that with um mark witten's paleo art book right i think i think mark's kind of the person who proposed it that hmm. because and it's I, it's pretty well documented that, that baby triceratops do have little, their little horns point pretty backwards and then as they grow, they turn. But yeah, if the keratin isn't shed and it's retained through life, then the very tip of the keratin will keep that backwards point from when they were a baby, which I think is logical. It's a, it, it follows just kind of how it would grow. Yeah. And speaking of Triceratops growth, do we want to mention the elephant-sized animal in the room? You mean Taurosaurus? Oh, yes. Taurosaurus is on our wheel separately for good yeah. reasons. <laughs> <laughs> because, so, okay. All right, fine. Maybe, get... maybe we save that for the Taurosaurus video. Yeah. We can save it for say. Taurosaurus. We should we'll because we have much less to say about Taurosaurus. Yeah. So okay. suffice it to say, we will be doing a separate video about Taurosaurus because Taurosaurus is a different species. So uh, the other day, I was doing a little bit of research on our Triceratops here in the game. Namely, I was seeing if there was a way that I could have it actually, unlike our poor, I guess I can say it, Anodontosaurus from the, our, our last episode, our, our Euoplocephalus. Uh, I wanted to see if there was a way that I could get this animal to actually win a fight against a predator in its ecosystem. Uh, so I was playing around with its stats and I took a look at it in the species viewer as well and noted something interesting when I moused over the Jurassic Park versus Jurassic World designs. I'm pretty sure that they are representations of the two species of Triceratops. Hmm. That the Jurassic Park Triceratops has a much uh, thicker and shorter nose horn than the Jurassic World one, and notably also has a longer beak. Um, uh, their horn positions are a little bit different as well. It's actually, it's actually that one's not as good. The, but uh, one. yeah, well, I, no, no, no. I mean the horn positions, but yes. So when whenever our buddy here wakes up, uh, I'm pretty sure that the Jurassic Park Triceratops is specifically Triceratops horridus, and the world uh, depiction is Triceratops prorsus. That's, That's a very cool interesting detail. and very esoteric detail. Um, because the two animals prove. look pretty similar, right? Prorsus... Their jugals are different too. It's actually really interesting. Like they got some weird details correct about oh, when we go to the species viewer, we'll like pop back yeah, and forth between yeah. them and it'll be easier to see. But yeah. like, look at the nose horn that. on that one. It's, it's much narrower. It yeah. points forward a whole lot more. Yeah. And this is interesting because it gets to something that's been proposed recently, which is that um, it's been proposed that Triceratops horridus and Triceratops prorsus form what's called an anagenetic sequence, which means that the entire population of Triceratops horridus gradually changed over time 
into something that is morphologically different enough later on that we call it a different species. And that it, it's not that there's some common ancestor that they're both diverging off of that we didn't sample, just that the entire population of Triceratops horridus changed pretty slowly and then became Triceratops porosus. So I think that it's kind of neat that the earlier Triceratops design from the Jurassic World franchise is more similar to Triceratops horridus and the later one is more similar to Triceratops porosus. It does match when in time we know the two species lived. And I think that's a pretty neat detail. <laughs> So Scott, the thank level you for finding of, it. You're welcome. Yeah, that, that's really cool. <laughs> the level of intentionality, I'm not sure is. Oh wow, they're all just on the outskirts. Weird. Um, like I'm not. I'm not sure how intentional that was, but like, especially because like the horns of the Jurassic World one seem to be a little bit more in line with what we think of for Horridus, and the horns for the Jurassic Park ones are a little bit more porosus y but. Uh, Anyways, they're at least different enough that they're different enough that I'd call them different species. No, um, and I'm an expert on this because I'm a fossil preparator who's never written a paper. Um. One thing that I will say about the design that I don't like, and this happens to a couple of the Jurassic World Ceratopsians, the tail is way too long. Which it's... is sad because I like it long. Well, so I, 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 I'm a bit of a tail I size have queen. I've seen. A trend I feel like recently online of people reconstructing Triceratops with longer tail. I think it's coming from the the specimen that just recently famously got sent to Australia. But I I think that Aust I think the specimen that's in Australia has a pretty long tail. Like I I would love to be corrected if I'm wrong. I I particularly hate the feet on these uh, on the Triceratops. Yeah, the Ceratopsian feet aren't great. They're kind of it, egregiously bad for the Ceratops. It's like, it's essentially what we said for uh, in our Euoplocephalus video that, like, because they're relatively closely related and have feet that kind of look similar ish, uh, but they're particularly elephantine on the Ceratopsians. And I mean, the, Jurassic World kind of gets herbivore feet specifically pretty pretty bad um and it isn't even like a case like the sauropods where they have like some of the most like awful hr geiger feet of any creature that's ever existed and i don't blame them for getting it wrong yeah no everybody I mean, wants these feet to be elephant feet and they're just not yeah no they're, and they're much more interesting than that i think because they're like they're dinosaurs dangerous. are not great at walking on four legs, anatomically speaking. Correct me if I'm a buffoon and an idiot, but wasn't there some discussion on how splayed the forearms were? There has been in the past. There's been a lot of discussion on it. I don't know where it's landed. Okay. This yeah, feels guess... right to me, like pretty upright. Sure. but. I don't know. I don't study Ceratopsians. I, my the semi crawl. Uh, uh, go on. My understanding is that study of Lane and what's the specimen at the LA County Museum? Is that Hatcher? All of the depictions I've seen of the like semi sprawled gate where it's like, and it's only the forelimbs. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, it might have kind of been yeah, like that's... that a little bit. They always look bad. They always just look wrong. Yeah. The vibes are off. It, I don't think it's possible the animal was locomoting like that. Mm -hmm. the, the whole question is really... So, like, when you... I'm going to scoot back for this. When you rotate your hand, right, to do this, to plant it on the ground, you're rotating your radius bone, which is on the thumb side of your hand, over the ulna bone in the forearm. And we actually have a rotary joint. It's a circle at the top of the radius that allows it to skate over the ulna so that you can cross the bones over Reptiles don't have that joint. So reptiles are generally considered unable to do that kind of crossing over thing. And you are supposed to need to be able to cross over if you're going to walk upright on four legs. And that's been behind the idea that all of these dinosaurs were actually like sprawled. It hits ceratopsians pretty hard where the idea is like the forelimbs were still sprawled, even though we know they were upright on the back limbs. It, it just doesn't seem like a possible anatomical configuration 
and I think study of some well-preserved triceratops that have like the shoulder blade and girdle and all of the forelimb bones have showed that there are other configurations you can use to get to an upright posture. It might mean that the hands are kind of rotated out so that the fingers don't face forward, but they kind of face outward a little bit. Um, which is, I think, how it's currently reconstructed, that the toes are kind of pointed at a 45-degree angle away from the body midline, but that allows the elbows to go backward and the animal to walk upright. So it wouldn't be exactly like this. This is more like an elephant, but it would be an upright stance like this, not a, not a semi-sprawled one at the front, mm -hmm. which I think seems far more reasonable. Yeah. Now, we've just had three fights. We've had a little fight club happen. And I did want to like mention the behavior animations a little bit, but I, I really like the behavior animations for this. I think the kind of interspecific combat between the Triceratops is, is really cool. And like that's probably what they were doing with these horns, is using them for display and like ritual combat. Mm -hmm. Right. There's actually, a, a, and I haven't heard many arguments to the contrary of that, that it really seems like people are kind of like pretty united in the ceratopsians use their at least the the chasmosaurines the ones that had the brow horns that like really could lock their horns together were probably doing that and there's actually an interesting uh ankyceratops skull that we had at the university of michigan museum that had a pathology that really looks like a horn injury right behind one of its eyes um, on that note, the Milwaukee Public Museum has a Taurosaurus that has a puncture in its frill that I can send a picture so you can put it on the screen now if you'd like. But there's like, they have a mirror on the wall because of the way it's mounted, it's kind of on the other side, but it, there's a, there is a, a horn puncture in the, in the back of the frill, which is pretty neat. Yeah. No, I mean, it, it seems like it's the kind of thing that not only makes sense, like, aesthetically, but there's mm -hmm. pretty abundant fossil evidence for based on mm -hmm. those two things. If that memory said, serves, oh, go on. Oh, sorry. Please. I was like, that said, like, Triceratops and Taurosaurus have a different vibe about their horns that all other Ceratopsians don't, and the difference is they live with T Rex. Like, I feel <laughs> like Trikes and Taurosaurus, their horns just look so much more like weapons. Because, like, if you think, thinking about Chasmosaurs, like, they're kind of curvy, they're kind of loopy, they're doing other things. And with these two, they're like, point forward. <laughs> be sharp and yeah there's not a lot of like extra curves and display things going on with them it is it is interesting and i i mean it's something that's impossible to really test scientifically but yeah. it it feels right based on vibes like the the horns on triceratops and taurosaurus feel like they're fortifications like mm -hmm. the way old forts <laughs> used to just have like pikes that, that mounted into the earthworks yes to repel well, an attack it's you a know, one creature phalanx if you've got a poker, you will probably poke. <laughs> and whether you're poking, you know, Chad to to try and get all the stasis, or you're poking big mean T-Rex, poker's gonna poke. Yeah. And speaking uh, of. Yes, oh God, let's it... turn to Thunderdome. <laughs> where we've got our juiced up triceratopses <laughs> so that the T-Rexes have no option but to, to go after them. And we've got in the queue the natural predator that's found <laughs> with Triceratops. It just so happens to be a very famous dinosaur who's, who's getting a very dramatic intro, but I'm afraid the camera's a little out of frame. Oh no, it's it's correct. I didn't know you made two Ooh. of them. Feathery oh, both. Gotta make two. <laughs> and we gave them feathers because T-Rex almost certainly had them in real life. And I, I think it's a nice little touch. We're showing natural, natural biological behavior here. This is exactly as it would have been. Some natural behavior of hunting. We'll do you have that. combat turned on? I do have combat turned on. Okay. Combat frequency none. No. Oh, here we go. Is this anything? He's yelling. Oh, he woke up that guy in the... He's like, wake up! Fight. Wake up! We gotta fight to the this death. This is just a wake-up call. <laughs> Babe, wake up. It's time to fight. <laughs> no, he just, he just wanted to yell. Oh, he genuinely did. Just woke him up. Right. Well, Maybe they know they're not gonna happen. win. Well, they might win. It's, it's kind of equal odds, right? It's... 
at least in the test that I did, the oh, it looks like it's happening. The Rex didn't win against the Trike. Well, one of the Rexes here, I think, had a, a combat trait. One, one I accidentally released has higher, slightly higher strength. So, uh oh, we'll see. Oh, they're just not fighting. Hell of I a mean, Thunderdome. Also, probably, probably how it would have happened. Yeah, probably how your average interaction between these two would have gone. Just trying to avoid each other. Right. I mean, that's fair. Animals tend to not be like itching for a fight, like a like a drunk ass at a bar. Like, oh. I think we're getting. I think we're going in. Yeah. Getting a fight now. Already better than Neoplacephalus. Yes, I mean, it's not an instant. An instant. Whoa! Oh. I thought maybe he'd get up, like ganged up on, but I don't think that mechanic exists. God, I wish. Oh, that would be great. It'd be great if they could do like the shield wall thing. Oh, oh yeah, that would be great. Oh. Hey. All right. This is a pretty. Oh, oh is he right. giving up? Yeah. Victorious. That was cool. That and was then... much better than the Uaplocephalus fights. <laughs> he fights is a loose term there. Yeah, that's a low bar to trip over, my friend. <laughs> much better than the Uaplocephalus obliteration. <laughs> um. That's all hurt. Yeah. Oh, maybe. Uh, but, uh, I also. That's probably real. Probably realistic, yeah. right? Yeah. Cool. That was a failed predation attempt, which, you know, happens more often than not. Oh, now they're gonna have a little tussle between themselves. That's interesting. But we're not we're not here for you, T Rex. One Get day. out of here. T Rex, one day you'll be randomly selected. <laughs> so do we <laughs> want to before we go to the species viewer and do our final rating, one thing we forgot to do was look at how Triceratops comes out of the hatchery, which I think is an important factor. In determining at least the cuteness of these designs, which I'm not, spoiler alert, I don't think the Triceratops is very cute, but it's not a particularly cute animal. Um, no, even the babies like say, look like aliens. Did we say anything about their social, like their sociality, like how social these animals are? You know, we didn't, and that's an interesting point. Hmm. Um, so some ceratopsian dinosaurs have actually been found well I, uh, hold on this is all get, putting the cart before the horse a little bit the exit animation sucks yeah, yeah it's very boring it, yeah it, it befits the design in that it could be a lot more interesting and it's not mm -hmm. um in terms of social behavior i think that what's really weird to me is that we do have abundant evidence of a lot of ceratopsians living in large groups there's or at a bone least dying bed. in large groups. Or at least dying in large groups. But there's like a bone bed of thousands of Centrosaurus, I think. At thousands? Literally hundreds at the very least. I think it's been estimated at over a thousand individuals. Like, oh. it's insane. And we have a lot of specimens of Triceratops, but I don't think we've ever found a Triceratops death assemblage. No. So but, they're common, but we don't have evidence of multiple of them living together. That could be a taphonomic thing. Like if it's if the kind of disasters that kind of entomb an entire herd of Pachyrhinosaur like Pachyrhinosaurus aren't happening in the Hell Creek, or at least aren't like happening in a in a place where they're going to preserve. Right. Now, no, that's that's like, a hundred percent true. And there's something to be said about like. Right, like if a bunch of snapping turtles died in a pond. Is that a herding mentality, or are they just kind of vibing in the same place? I think there's some evidence based on, like, the distribution of the ages of the fossils that suggests it's possibly more a little more socially complex than just turtles, or, you know, what you would get from just, like, a bunch of alligators living on a bank together. That's not really a herd, but... But it's also, I think it's true that, like, large terrestrial animals, ooh, fight time. Fight. Oh, the other ones are going to fight, too. we got a, a double oh, feature. Double feature. Oh, ah. that, one's, that one's ending. So now this one will begin. No, I, I think, Alex, you're right. I think that there is some evidence, and I... 
I don't know if there's evidence in in the Ceratopsians, but like there's evidence in like the Alaskan dinosaurs, I think in the Hadrosaurs, that they were like moving to the same places at the same time, right? That there's like some evidence for some migratory. Oh, Ooh. Ooh. Got we him. have a victory. Rex down. All right. Black Hawk. Look at that. Cold blooded and just walks away. <laughs> doesn't even look at him. It's not. It, it's Triceratops is so it's so dumb it doesn't realize it's taken a life. Why would it wake up? <laughs> <laughs> this is this is just kind of also reminding me that do you guys remember back when Saurian was first getting worked on and they had this whole feature that they were touting about the the animals would have like a realistic AI that they would try to fulfill their needs and pick fights when they needed to and stuff like that and just kind of like have a working ecosystem with it really complexly modeled and then they tried it and they found out that the only thing that happened was Triceratops found out that it was at its most advantageous if it killed every single thing that breathed in the Hell Creek <laughs> because they were either potential predators or, comp or competitors for resources. That's pretty cool. And Triceratops is the size of an elephant and has a shield wall for a face. Maybe they did that. Maybe that's why there's lower diversity in the Hell Creek. Maybe Triceratops <laughs> was just exterminating every other species they, Maybe they were racist. <laughs> Daddy Tops a, is actually a f***ing George. That had to be George Lucas where he's like, all right, we're going to have some dinosaurs. I want one of them to be racist. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to take right. us to the species viewer. Yeah. Perfect. Please do. Um, I'm tired. Same. <laughs> All right, yeah. Let's just rate the son of a bitch. I want to. I want to take a little bit of a look at the, the different species thing. Really, mm -hmm. that's a. It's a simple task. <sighs> does Does this mean if they are different species, does this mean that we're ranking them separately? No. 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 Okay. I can already tell you that. It doesn't Part change. Color grading. grading. So that's a better color grading. So here's the Jurassic Park skin. And we'll just go to... If a, you just mouse over, yeah. like, back and forth. Yeah, the nose horn is different. Brow horns, too. Look at the jugal yeah. as well. Yeah, there's some differences there. The beak on the Jurassic Park one is a lot longer. Mm hmm Hmm. Yeah, so there are differences that are reminiscent of the species differences between the two Triceratops species, although I don't think it's a one-to-one -one match. I'm not an expert not. on them, but right, it's not like one's entirely one or the other, but the traits they're changing are things that do differ between them. Mm -hmm. That is cool. I'm willing to admit that. You're, to find you're, a big enough, you're a big enough guy to admit that? I'm a big enough guy to admit that Jurassic World uh, Evolution 2 did something that looks cool. So this is a pretty interesting version of the Triceratops. Yeah, it's got stripes. Pretty pro stripe. What do we What do we think, folks? What do we do? We want to go just in group order again? Yeah, let's do a little group. Amelia, yeah, kick means, us off. Yeah, that means I'm first. Alrighty. Um, I mean, I like Ceratopsians a lot. I like Triceratops a lot. And like as we've said a couple times, there was a lot of potential that is wasted on this design because like they could have put color on the frill they could have put color on the horns they could have put texture on the horns although i do really like the the longhorn coloration happening on the horns on this one um i don't know it's not offensive but it's not perfect i'll give it a b you know for me call me a nerd but i think triceratops i, I know you will i think triceratops as an animal is one that needs to have kind of a nobility about it in, in its depictions. It, it's just not right to me that it doesn't. This is very blobular. Yeah. It, it's, mm -hmm. it's lumpy and it's misshapen. It, it just doesn't give this regality that it should have. This should be a noble warrior that does battle with the other greatest warrior of its time. I, and I don't care this how is, cringy it is that I'm saying this. This is some one of the most embarrassing things you've ever said. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and I've known you for a long time. <laughs> you have. Um, but I don't care. Like, honestly, the art done for the Dueling Dinosaurs exhibit at the North Carolina State Museum 
is like it gives triceratops that air and this design does not there's a long way of saying b tier it's not offensive it's just falling way short of what it should be in my opinion especially considering that making a cool design is the goal for the movie in the game so like this could be a lot better and it it would be justified in being a lot better so i'm gonna agree with essentially everything you guys said that it doesn't really do the animal the justice that I think it deserves. You can have a whole lot more fun with a Triceratops design. And I really love when large obvious display features like the horns and frill on this Triceratops are really accented. I love bright colors, all that stuff. And the fact that like, I do like some of the patterning, some of the stripes on the horns, a little bit of the stuff on the frill. It's just so boring. So even though I'm basically saying the same things you are, I don't think you guys are being harsh enough. I'm putting it C. I think that this is a Ooh, solid C. Yeah. The B I would classify as this is good, but it could be better. I think that this is boring. All right, to the center. Ooh. Alex, what are your thoughts? This is giving me lots to think of because I was going to say B, but I do see Scott's argument. Mm -hmm. However, I don't know. I'm just thinking about the one with the fun scales on the back, and I kind of like it, so I'm going to go B. I'll, I'll put that one on so you can have a thought. Have a thinker. Like I just, I like that. It, it makes it just not boring enough to get into the B tier. But that's just me. No, that's a lot better. It's less lumpy looking somehow. By it giving it lumpy. the accessory lumps, it takes away from the gross lumps. But it's just gray again. That's, I'm sorry. No one cares, Scott. You've but it's also, it. Scott, it's iconic. It's from the movie. It's from the movie. Maybe if it was laying down and covered in dirt. Um, I guess I'll speak my piece now on the Triceratops. Uh, which is, is to say, uh, yes, I don't want to repeat everything that's already been said. I agree with it. I think if I was to offer any insight, it may be that, you know, Triceratops appears in Jurassic Park as a sick animal. And I think the kind of vibe of it being ill has escaped into all the other incarnations of it, except for maybe the Lost World where like one wrecks the camp, but that's mm -hmm. kind of like out of focus and far away. So you're like, that's a Triceratops being cool. But like, just, you know, it may be hard to break out of the fact that the first time we see one, it's sick and diseased. And these all kind of feel low energy, sickly animals. Um, they're boring. Scott, you know, I'm really on the fun. fence between C and B. And I know it doesn't matter. Like, even if I say C, it's still gonna come out to be B. I was gonna give it a B to start and I think I'm gonna stick with it. I'm gonna, I was, I'm gonna give it a B. Triceratops is B. B. B for Briceratops. B for Briceratops. And I'm not sad about it. All right, guys. It's that time again. We're this gonna is my spin the wheel. Time. Time. To spin that wheel. It's time to spin that wheel. Let's get a little bit more energy than we had on the wow. uh, Yeah, that's what I'm talking spin about. Spin that wheel. Spin. I the hope it's a theropod. Wheel. I hope everybody's excited for the stretch of Asian stegosaurus that we're going to get where we have three things to say about them collectively. <laughs> Is it our first? <laughs> it's it's our first Asian stegosaurus. <laughs> Asian stegosaurus. Great. Oh, thank God. Next, yeah, next week. <laughs> we're mostly Early Angosaurus. We love Huayangosaurus. Everybody. An animal the size of a deer. <laughs> I hope only... everyone's. Sorry, <laughs> I hope everyone's really looking forward to for looking forward to our first sub five minute video. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Forty five minutes, an hour, ten minutes. <laughs> These will be yeah. paleontologist rank. <laughs> <laughs>